Hello and welcome to this special video cast made for the first edition of Academies Week. Um, my name is Laura McInerney and I am the Deputy Editor. And what we're going to do today is review this first edition that we've had published of our new newspaper. It is a newspaper for all school sector, even though I know that the name has been a little bit controversial. Joining me on the sofa today is the deck to my aunt, the uh, holly to my Philip, if you will. And what he, <laughs> and it's Sam Friedman, who is the Director of Research and Impact at Teach First. In a previous life, Sam was also the political advisor to Michael Gove. And back then, I used to go down to his office and uh, bash him if I didn't like policies very much, sometimes facepalm on the desk. This is true, I can confirm that. And so what we decided to do was have Sam in today to get his own back a little bit. And what he's done is, I believe, reviewed through the paper. Yes, read every word. Fantastic. And he's going to uh, explain what he liked, what he didn't like. He can bash me over the head this time if he wants, uh, metaphorically, hopefully, perhaps physically. No. I'm a little, I'm a little scared. Um, and what we're going to do is begin with the first page. So if you could sort of tell people yep. about what it was about. So the um, front page story on the first week's edition is about a free school in South London that opened with 17 pupils when it was due to have 120 pupils starting in, in the school. Uh, and I was quite surprised, actually, by the story, because when I was in the department, uh, usually a free school would only be allowed to open if it had ha at least got to about half the numbers that it originally applied for, because that would make it f financially viable. It's difficult to see how it will be financially viable with 17 pupils, uh, although there may be some extenuating circumstances in this particular case. But yeah, it was, it was interesting to see that happen. Are you surprised that we could get the number? The exact number yeah. who were at the school, yes, because it wouldn't be published yet. It's not, it's not. We had, to, we, had to work, we had to work pretty hard on this, but we thought it was quite important. It's £18 million for the site, and that's not just for that school. It's to be, to be done for, there's supposed to be a range of schools on there, but it's not at the moment. £18 million for 17 people felt quite extraordinary. Yes, a million pounds per people, almost. Almost. Um, so that was the front page, which took us some pretty hard work, but was quite important and is quite surprising. I've asked you to look for three other things that were either surprising or interesting. What did you, what did you pick? So I think my favourite story in the whole paper was Frank Dobson describing hailing a school for having amazing floors, uh, which was pretty special. Did you see what the floors were? They were pretty special. Um, uh, should I, hold it? I should hold it up so everyone can see the, the amazing floors. Um, there. Uh, also, I like that the story was written by Billy Camden, who sound, is a great name. Sounds like it should be in a 50s rock revival. So. He's our junior reporter. He is, very, yeah. and uh, very good stories. Excellent. So tell us of the three, though. Is it, are you going to pick that out? So, of so, so that, 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 I think, is my favourite story. But no, um, I, think, I actually think you had two stories that um, you could have led with um, that you kind of hid away a bit in the, in the paper. So there's, um, the first one uh, is, is uh, Theo Agnew joining... John Nash um, as a director of the Futures Academy Trust, which is uh, John Nash, Lord Nash's um, Academies Trust. And uh, he's a, a minister in the Department of Education. He's a, he's a junior minister. And Theodore Agnew is a, a non-executive director in the department. So it does look a little bit cosy. Um, and uh, it's got a fairly straight headline. Um, and now, if that had been in The Guardian, it would have had... Uh, uh, Tories in crony row, so I think it was, it's quite interesting that you've gone for, for, for quite a straight approach to the story, um, rather than try and play it up, which might make it, do you think that's a, is that an approach that you, you deliberately decided to do, to make it... Um, to be fair, I would like to take some credit and say we've done it very seriously, but there is a mm. cartoon of them in bed together underneath. Yes, so I don't that think is true. I, well, you could necessarily say that we... It sort of makes them look quite friendly, though. Well, that, I mean, I'm not trying to suggest <laughs> that, <laughs> that there's anything else about it. Obviously, it's all metaphorical. But I suppose from our perspective, I guess in this is a question for mm. you. Whilst it may be surprising and there is a way to play it as mm. Tory cronies, mm. you know, are in on something together, can you think of legitimate reasons why people may want to work together in this way. Yeah, I mean, I, I would argue that it is uh, reasonable enough that they, they know each other, they're both, uh, they've had long careers in business, they're, that they, uh, Theodore Agnew has, is on another academy's board in, in, the, in the east of England, so, you know, he's a good person to have on your board, there's perfectly legitimate reasons for having him. I my point was more that a, another newspaper would have tried to play it up a bit more mm. and gone, gone for that angle. I, I mean, I, I obviously knew them both when I worked in the department, so I know that there's... 
I don't think there's anything untoward about the arrangement. Um, they're, they're both honourable people, but I do. I think that was it was interesting that it, that it was done so straight. And actually, that was my, the other story I really liked, which again I think you know it was a little bit hidden away in a way, was um, actually a, a Labour shadow minister calling for nurseries to become academies, um, which I would imagine a lot of the party wouldn't be that keen on. So again, that could have been you know, a, bit, a bit of phoning around. That could have been uh, uh, Labour MPs. In, in nursery war or something, um, <laughs> nursery war. I'm, I'm slightly concerned that you seem to think that, you know, my aim here is always going to be to, like, scandalise everything that was going I'm on. Just, I'm just used to that with journalists, so it's quite, it's, right. a, it's a change to see a newspaper that is, uh, is just running everything very straight, I think. Um, so, I mean, I know it's, it's, it's for the sector rather than for, for but, um, I mean, certainly the Guardian Education Supplement would, would, would have, I think, tried to play an angle on it. So it's, 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 it's refreshing in many ways to, to run it straight. Are you surprised that Ada are doing that? Yeah, I was quite surprised because it, they've been fairly cautious on um, sort of academies. They're, they're, they're aware, obviously, that it's still unpopular with large chunks of the party and, and, and of their supporters. So um, I was quite surprised that they were sort of trying to push the agenda further, actually, onto the next, something that Michael Gove didn't even do in terms of the next step of, 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 of academy's reform. It's an interesting mm. idea. I, I don't know, haven't thought about it enough to know if it would work, but it's a, an interesting idea. It's, I, I have to say, I, I feel as though there's, Labour have almost moved on. We mm. haven't had that same sort of academy bashing. There's still an extent to which people are not happy about certain things. So the, the Nash and Agnew arrangement, mm. I can see people picking on. I'm, I suppose I felt a little bit like the, the thing that's interesting for me is not so much that it was Labour, but that it's nursery schools. Mm. When have we had this idea that actually very young people mm. under fives should be in something that looks more like schools? Because that's how mm. I felt this would come across. Rather than the academies bit, it's almost, do we want nurseries to become schools? Mm. Um, but clearly you were more excited by the labour bit. Well, I, I, it's my, it's my, uh, my, <laughs> my former job, I guess, means I always look for the political angle in these stories. But... Um, uh, it, is a, it is interesting, actually, the way nurseries have become... I think they'll probably be the big political battleground in the next election. Um, it's, uh, it fits with the, probably what will be the overall theme in the election of um, value for money and cost of living and so on. Um, and it's a big expense for a lot of families, so I expect it will... It was, so it's interesting that, that they would be going for that angle um, rather than a simple cost angle, which is what they've talked about in the past. So what I'm learning is that next time we need to have three front pages... Well, I mean, you could have chosen any of those stories as a front page, <laughs> I think. Work. Um, I, 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 yeah, so uh, they, 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 they could all have been uh, turned into a, into a GC exclusive, I think. So, to move on then, uh, I'm going to pick out a few things that I'm sad that you didn't pick okay. as your favourite. I'm sorry. I can't say that they're my favourites because they were, you know, so many great people in this and so many great contributions. However, I did enjoy the question this week of, is it illegal to run a vegetarian school? And wonder if you knew the answer to the question before you had read this. Um, I hadn't thought about it a lot. The idea of vegetarian school horrifies me as a carnivore. Um, I would have been utterly miserable at a vegetarian school, so and I would I could, can't conceive of sending my children to one. Um, but uh, I think actually the answer would be that uh, it currently would be legal for an academy or free school opened after 2010. And before April 2014, yes. this, is, this is sort of a window. There was a window when the, when the food regulations weren't written into academy funding contracts, which Jamie Oliver got very upset about when, when uh, I was in the department. I had to deal with, with that a lot, so yes. But, uh, but yes, if you weren't in that window, it probably would be illegal. Or at least you'd have to come up with a strong case why you did want to run a vegetarian school. What I found most interesting was the fact that you, um, the regulations stipulate they have to red meat a certain amount of times per week, mm. which felt slightly, uh, slightly mad that that's mm. the way that we've we've gone. You have yes. any insights into why that happened? I well, I always thought the food regulations were were crazy. That's why I. You know, we, we thought Is that we because they won't allow you to have chips every day, though? Well, no. I just think I just think I don't know why the state needs to specify the exact amount of red meat or mackerel that a, that a child needs to eat every week. So surely we can leave that kind of detail to schools. It's not in their interest to give them, you know, rubbish food. Um, what is if it's cheap? No, because they we, there's there's pretty strong evidence that if you give um, children really really poor quality food, they will be much worse behaved and so on. So it's in the interest of the school to feed them a decent meal. Um, so I, I just, it's the sort of thing that I, it is the worst kind of sort of petty state interference. Um, and, uh, I was actually quite upset when academies and free schools got dragged back into these regulations. 
And so, so you think it should be legal to run a vegetarian school if that's what people... If that's what the school think is good for them. And parents I, are happy. I wouldn't send my kids to a vegetarian school, but, you know, if, if, if that's what they want to do, it is healthy, I'm told. I've never tried it myself. <laughs> well, at least we know the answer now. I think that's my favourite thing about it. If anyone asks me, now I know. And the other thing I, was, I, I wanted to get your opinion on was we're doing these double-page spreads, which mm. are about the new regional schools commissioners. Um, it's slightly large to show on the screen. Um, and this first one is Martin Post, who's taken up the North West London and South Central England position. And regional school commissioners, there's eight of them across England, they're going to be in charge of academies, both in a promotional role, but also um, sort of there to make sure that they're doing things correctly, if you like. And wondered what you thought of the format, the layout? Um, yeah, I actually thought this was really useful. Um... They, they are very odd regions, the regional commissioners. The, the, the one that you covered this week is North West London and South Central England, which I've never seen as a region before. Um, so it's actually quite useful just to see what they look like geographically, to get a list of all the head teachers who've mm. been um, put onto the boards that, these, that are supporting these regional commissioners, and to get a bit of a sense of who they are. Because it's been a bit of a hidden policy. It hasn't been talked about very much. There hasn't been much written about it elsewhere. But these people are, are going to be very important in the education system. They're going to have an awful lot of power. In a way, they've become sort of secretaries of state, for academies at least, for their region. Um, so that's, that is, I mean, that's literally what they are. They are the, representing the, the legal secretary of state. Is, yeah. yeah. Um, so it, 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 it's important to, to, that people know much more about the policy. I think a lot of people I spoke to don't really know it's happened. One of the things we're planning to do is we're going to run this every week for the eight weeks for the eight regions. And then at the end, we're hoping that we can put them into a booklet with maybe some of the mm. context. So again, that's the sort of thing where do you think people knowing more about who these head teachers are who will also advise the regional school mm. commissioners is quite a useful yeah, thing. Yeah, I think, I mean, that is, that is, it is, it is actually something I hadn't seen written down in one place before, so that is, that is useful, it will be. And also, um, one final thing I want to get your opinion on, mm. when we were adding up how many academies there are, so for instance, in North West London and South Central England, there's 23% of the schools are um, open academies. And we, we had this conversation as to whether or not we included special needs schools. Mm. Do you include them in the statistics or do you separate them out? Now, we've decided to include them and it was a strong steer from us that we didn't want to constantly treat special needs schools as if they were different to everybody mm. else, but they are part of a whole school sector and we wanted to treat them as so. Um, can you see any problems of us doing it that way? I think when it comes to a stat like that around academies, it's fine to include them because they can become academies like any other school, um, and many have done. I think if you're looking at results, you usually exclude them because their results tend to look very, very different to other schools and actually skews the figures that you're using. Right. So that's how I tend to do it. If I'm doing any, any analysis with results, I will take out special schools. Um, but um, for, for a stat like that, I think it's absolutely right to include them. So no bashing me over the head for this one then? No, no, that's fine. Right. And that's the final thing, that any big gripes or anything you'd really like to see? Um, well, the I I, only thing I would say is that um, there has been a bit of noise about it being called Academies Week when it is about the whole school sector, but a lot of your stories are about academies and free schools. Mm. Most of your news is about academies and free schools. So I was just wondering, you know, was that a conscious decision or just that that was the news this week? Are you going to look to cover more, you know, more maintained schools and uh, more stories about them? Definitely. We had one story in which was to do with uh, one school, which is just, I mean, literally a week ago, mm. become an academy. Um, one of the other problems for us was this was the beginning of the school year. So naturally we're focused on either new schools or school takeovers. Mm. So the academy part of it, unfortunately this week, we balanced it out a bit between primary and secondary and early years mm. um, but weren't able to get the school sectors we will look to do that and actually one of the things for me comes back to this alternative provision and special needs schools mm. as well I want it to be about the whole sector so we're going to keep an eye on it but what's mm. news is news unfortunately and we'll see how we get on going forwards anyway thank you very much for your time today I have uh, very much enjoyed it and I hope we'll continue to get your feedback in the future and maybe get you back here again absolutely anytime thank you